Oh. Hello? Um, I think you haven't played it. Okay, yeah, there was a message saying there's some error, so just want to make sure it's still connected. Yeah, yeah, you're still, you're still connected. Oh, not now. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 you're back. All right, yeah, somehow there was a message. Yeah, it's playing. Okay, good. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, hello, everyone. Good, up, good morning, afternoon, and good night. So, um, uh, my name is Xiu Guanxin. I'm from the CAS uh, Institute in Shanghai. So, uh, again, um, I want to thank the uh, selection committee. Uh, it's a great honor for me to uh, talk about our work today. Um, so, I think we go. So um, plants actually uh, can face multiple um, challenges during their lifetime. So we have just heard uh, Dr. Francesco talk about how plants sense um, the oxygen level, right? So obviously there are many other um, factors, both biotic and abiotic factors, or um, non-optimal growth conditions that plants need to face. Um, so accordingly, um, a great portion of the plant genome is actually devoted to um, sense the environmental growth and to activate um, downstream responses to help plants adapt um, these adverse conditions. Um, so I work with plant microbe interactions. Um, so uh, the plant diseases caused by a great variety of microbe pathogens in, in nature uh, is a great uh, threat to uh, plant survival. And uh, there have been uh, specific statistics showing that um, a substantial percentage of the yield loss of major crops uh, in the world can be attributed to uh, pest infest infestation. So it's a big problem. Um, and since my PhD, um, so I was trained on um, the plant pathogen interaction, uh, mainly yielding the Arabidopsis celiana, so modern swingy puzzle system. So this is a model system that has been widely used uh, in our field over the uh, last 20 years also to um, understand the plant resistance and the microbial pathogenesis and principles. So this is a gram-negative bacteria that can, um, it can be, is used, mainly used as a foliar pathogen in the lab. So it can enter the plant tissue uh, through natural openings such as stomata and multiply inside the plant leaf um, in the apoplastic uh, space between the mesophyll cells. Um, so I was trained, um, my PhD and the postdoc was uh, focusing on and the microbial pathogenesis mechanism, or in other words, how do the pathogens cause disease? Um, so for gram negative bacteria, including the Zimono swingy I work with, uh, one key virulence weapon is called type 3 factors, which is a class of uh, uh, virulence proteins that are translocated into the plant cell um, from the bacteria uh, through a specialized secretion system. So for the bacteria I work with, it generates uh, 36 factors. So my um, postdoc work, um, through my postdoc work, I discovered that um, this P3D bacteria can use um, two conservative factors called a very and Hoffman one to create a water-rich uh, living, living environment in the leaf. And this is all what we call uh, water soaking. So we can see here um, this uh, dark uh, spots basically represent the uh, water soaking spots um, in, in the uh, leaf infected by Silmonosundi bacteria. So this also occurred in the natural host tomato. And, and if we mutate AVRE and the one, we can see this visible water soaking will be um, abolished. So, um, so we know uh, in, uh, when plants grow normally um, or in a normal oikoplast, um, there is actually uh, a minimal amount of water. So it's largely filled with air, uh, which is presumably very important for physiological processes uh, such as gas exchange and photosynthesis to occur. So uh, this somehow uh, 
uh, we, we hypothesize that this um, dry apple flask uh, is actually uh, uh, non-optimal or is a, a adverse condition for bacterial growth. And pathogenic bacteria such as uh, Sumona syringi disease 3000 um, can use various factors to uh, drive this uh, water soaking formation. Um, so this, this water soaking could lead to a lot of uh, downstream consequences. For instance, it could make um, the nutrients more accessible uh, for bacteria to uptake. It is actually um, as proven by a recent um, paper by um, David Mackey's group from, on, on nature, uh, cell health and micro. Um, and also it could possibly um, lead to dilution of the defense compounds by, uh, uh, from plants. Uh, so which all, all of this could lead to a promotion of bacteria, uh, promotion of bacteria uh, multiplication in the apoplast. And importantly, um, this water soaking requires high air humidity to maintain because under low humidity, the water would evaporate from the stomata. So uh, from this work I just summarized, we uh, found out that we, we propose this new model of phytosphere microbiology. So many previous studies before uh, this study showed that um, the effectors could suppress um, plant immunity, which makes a lot of sense. However, through this study, we found that uh, suppression of immunity is not sufficient for pathogenesis to occur. We found that um, this uh, pathogen-driven uh, uh, wet apoplast um, is actually another important element of bacterial pathogenesis. So if we uh, make these two processes happen, then the basic pathogenesis can um, occur. Um, and also, um, so there's a, a very uh, famous um, principle called the disease triangle principle um, in the field of plant pathology, which describes that not only the host immunity, the host immunity and the pathogen virulence are important, but the environmental factors are also very important for um, the outcome of a plant disease. Um, so it's uh, long observed that the high humidity could promote many diseases to occur in nature, but the molecular, molecular basis was not known. Uh, so here we, uh, through the funding of this water soaking and the high humidity uh, requirement for uh, this uh, water soaking maintenance, um, this study um, provide an important insight into the long-standing uh, humidity influence on disease. Um, in addition, through this study, we also uh, uh, made an uh, observation that um, in the plant polymutant, um, in which plant basal immunity and the apoplast water pathway are mutated, so in this polymutant, we found out that not only the, the basic pathogenesis can occur, but also the bacteria microbiota in, that living inside the plant leaf um, can also over proliferate. So I'm going to mention this later, but I just want to show you that uh, through this, uh, uh, so, so through this work, we also uh, extend um, or lead me to the uh, area of plant leaf microbiota control. So, um, so, so I came back to China to start my own lab in 2017. Um, so, so I, I borrowed this from, I think it's my uh, job interview uh, uh, PowerPoint. So um, the, the plan at that time was to uh, extend uh, my training in uh, disease susceptibility and uh, um, work on the uh, plant pathogen um, humidity interactions uh, as well as plant um, leaf microbiota interaction. Uh, so the specific questions are uh, listed here. Uh, so some of, the pro some of these projects went well than others, uh, but uh, interestingly and also excitingly, we also made an um, unexpected funding on plant immunity. So now we are also working on, um, on plant immunity uh, field. Uh, so now we are working on um, both Arabidopsis and rice uh, as representative of um, Dicot and Monocot. So I'm going to tell you what we have learned uh, over the last almost five years uh, in these three um, directions. Uh, so first, I have told you that this, uh, we found out the bacteria pathogen can take advantage of the high humidity to um, generate water so can promote infection. Um, we propose that plants has a, so what we call the water soaking pathway, which normally would keep um, the apple plus water to a minimal level and therefore plants can grow normally. Uh, however, during pathogen infection, virulence proteins such as a very hormone one can um, target different components in this pathway and lead to water soaking. Um, so, so understand, so, so characterization of this pathway um, can be important for uh, understanding plant pathogen interactions because water soaking is actually uh, uh, widespread um, in plant disease caused by many, many different types of pathogens. Um, and in addition, we also 
uh, think that this uh, uh, study could help address a fundamental question in plant bi biology, which is how is the April plus water amount is controlled or regulated? Um, so uh, then uh, we took the two approaches, which uh, we think this is a fundamental question, but uh, people never uh, ignored or people never studied this before. So we took two approaches. First is to use the monitoring factor AVRE as a probe to, uh, to, to study uh, which plant proteins are involved in this pathway. And the other is a genetic, genetic screen. Um, so I'm telling you, uh, so we, we recently finished this uh, study and found out that uh, AVRE can actually interact with um, type 1 protein phosphatase um, from Arabidopsis. So, so type 1 or PP1 family. Um, is relatively um, less known compared to, for instance, PP2 families uh, in plant biology. Um, so we found out that AVRE can interact with um, all the uh, top members um, when um, over-expressed uh, in plant or uh, in in vitro pronoun assays. Um, so uh, Arabidopsis top has nine members. So we uh, actually use CRISPR technology to uh, knock out multiple tops and generate um, uh, different lines of polymutants. And finally, we found out that one line, the top one, two, five, three, seven, um, showing very interesting uh, the spontaneous wall soaking on the high humidity. So this is without pathogen uh, modulation. And uh, furthermore, when we infiltrate with uh, when we uh, infiltrate with the bacteria pathogen, the pathogen driven wall soaking was also more severe in this mutant compared to the wild type. And this is accompanied by uh, higher bacterial growth in this mutant. Um, so, and then in addition, we, we wonder why this mutant show this interesting uh, water soaking phenotype. And then um, we found that this is a mutant actually uh, show ABA hypersensitivity. So here I'm just showing you one of the assays for ABA sensitivity. Uh, we found that the top mutant, for instance, the, uh, uh, has a very strong stomata closer phenotype. So, uh, this results suggest to us that the ABA pathway and possibly uh, stomata uh, uh, movement um, are involved in the world soaking formation. And uh, indeed, so I'm showing you that uh, when we do bacterial inoculation using wild type strain or AVRI Hopin 1 Newton strain, we see that uh, this uh, uh, bacteria can induce um, ABA responses, including ABA accumulation, gene expression, and stomata uh, closure in an ABA Hopin dependent manner. So, for instance, here, this result induced to a very high level of ABA, but ABA Hopin 1 uh, uh, induced to a much lower level. And there's the uh, same trend for the expression, and also um, this result induced a very strong stomata closure, which is um, uh, abolished in the ABA Hopin 1 unit. Um, so, without further details, so from this study, uh, we found that um, the, actually the uh, uh, swingy, the P swingy factor AVRE targets um, the Arabidopsis top um, SRK module to activate the ABA signal and the induced wound soaking. Um, and also, this study also suggests to us that the uh, plant ABA pathway and the stomach aperture are actually uh, important for uh, regulating the April plus water status in the leaf. So our study was also supported by uh, another study from Dr. Uh, Peter Murphy's lab that uh, this paper came out in the same issue. So they mainly worked on the um, effect of HOPIN-1 and found out um, HOPIN-1 may adopt a different strategy but also to achieve uh, stomata closure and the uh, soaking. And uh, uh, also, interestingly, um, there's a very recent paper um, that came out in Nature showing that actually plants uh, also evolved this uh, small peptide called screw, so, uh, which is, can be recognized in plants and leading to reopening of stomata and uh, uh, promotion of water loss in the leaf. So again, I think this together with our studies highlights the importance of um, stomata actual control and the, the April plus water regulation um, during pathogen infection. Um, so this is uh, the, the, our study on pathogen and humidity interaction. Uh, what about the other uh, direction, right? So does uh, high humidity also affect plants, particularly host uh, immunity? Um, so I already told you that this uh, high, uh, this uh, uh, important disease triangle um, principle, and also the high air humidity promotes many uh, plant diseases in nature. Um, however, the, uh, the molecular basis for whether and how humidity affects host plants was poorly understood. 
Um, so we initially performed an RSA experiment using a rhabdopsis um, inoculated with P Pseudomonas syringae bacteria and found out and placed the plants under different humidity and found out that interestingly, um, there are many immunity related genes uh, such as jasmonic acid or, or salicylic acid, which are important defense hormones. So uh, genes related to these pathways are differently regulated um, by humidity. Um, however, one problem is that the pathogen infection will actually uh, activate multiple um, immune pathways, including the uh, SAJ, SLIM pathways, and these pathways can um, cross talk with each other. So it's very complicated. Um, we therefore took a strategy of treating plants with uh, individual, different elicitors to activate individual pathways and try to answer um, one does um, high humidity affect specific plant immune pathway and then second does high humidity affect um, dicot and monocot plants in the same manner or via the um, same mechanism. So uh, it actually took us quite some time to set up the system um, and I'm just showing you that we found out uh, in the rhabdopsis, um, the salicylic acid, uh, which, had, which is an import, very important hormone, uh, especially for uh, defending against uh, uh, biotrophic or hemibiotrophic pathogen in rhabdopsis. So SA pathway is dramatically inhibited um, by uh, high humidity. So here, uh, BTH can, is an SA analog and can induce um, SA responsive gene expression. We can see um, this expression is dramatically suppressed, and also the SA uh, level is uh, significantly uh, suppressed by high humidity. Um, interestingly, in uh, cultivar rice, we found out the um, salicylic acid level uh, is not obviously affected. However, um, another um, very important defense pathway in uh, rice, um, the jasmonic acid pathway, is significantly inhibited uh, under uh, high humidity, as shown here and also the J level. So this tells us that um, high air humidity condition actually uh, puts plants under uh, an immune compromised status, uh, which can uh, make plants uh, vulnerable to uh, pathogen infection. So we are currently working on the uh, molecular mechanism and, and try to identify the components that are directly uh, affected by high humidity in this pathways and in these different um, plant species. Um, I'm just sharing you share you with one piece of data that um, in Arabidopsis, uh, we found out that um, when central uh, SA signal transduction element, the NTR1 protein seems to be uh, affected by high humidity. We found out that the nuclear localized NTR1 protein accumulates more under the high humidity, and this is also accompanied with um, lower uh, polyubiquitination level of the protein. Um, so hopefully I can update you with a, a more complete story in the near future. Um, and the long-term goal for this direction is to um, first uncover the molecular mechanism of humidity influence, on, on, uh, particularly on host immunity. And uh, also in the long term, we want to generate the high humidity resistant plants uh, by genetic engineering of the human targets and, and to hopefully provide uh, novel approaches for improving plant resistance. And because high humidity actually promotes many diseases in nature, we hopefully we, we, we hope the, the new approaches may offer a broad spectrum uh, resistance. Um, so the so, so that's the first part. So the second direction is plant um, leaf microbiota. Um, so I'm sure many of us have uh, known that the root microbiota um, has been a very, very fast uh, approaching uh, area over the last few years. So in contrast, the leaf microbiota um, or the phyllosphere microbiota was less understood. Um, I already mentioned to you that um, I started working on this uh, also from my postdoc work um, in uh, which we showed that we found out that uh, if we block the basal immunity and the apoplast water pathway, the, uh, this will lead to the overproliferation of the bacteria inside that grow in, inside the plant leaf or the endophytic. Um, population. And interestingly, this is associated with uh, uh, obvious tissue damage, uh, such as chlorosis or necrosis, um, in the leaf, in, in the mutant. So this tells us that this actually displays a form of uh, dysbiosis in the plant kingdom. Uh, so this dysbiosis was first described in um, human microbiota 
uh, which needs the uh, microbial imbalances and your link to uh, diseases. Um, so, so we um, think this give us very important implication that plants actually evolved ways to uh, normally have maintain a balanced microbiota. Um, so we decided to have a further functional study of uh, uh, microbiota homeostasis and leaf health. Um, so I started uh, initially this project, um, but then, uh, and then I came back to uh, China to have my own lab. So the following work has been finished by uh, outstanding um, leading scholars and postdocs uh, in Shenyang's lab, Dr. Shenyang He's lab, um, Dr. Tao Wang's lab, and also other collaborators. Um, so uh, we we did further a detailed analysis of the um, bacterial community in the mutant, and interestingly, we found out that this. Uh, uh, community shift in a way that uh, is rem rem that, that uh, resembles what occurred in the human um, uh, bowel disease. So, for instance, in, in both cases, we see the decreased bacterial diversity and also increase in the proto-bacteria and reduction in the uh, permitutes. So this suggests some um, interesting parallel between the uh, different um, kingdoms. Um, one important part of this paper is to uh, establish whether uh, there is real, really a causal role of microbiota homeostasis to uh, plant leaf health. So for this, we generated um, the synthetic communities from the different plant genotype, and also using um, the notebiotic system, we showed that indeed a misregulated microbiota, uh, for, for instance, from the thin come from the infect plants, um, can be harmful for the plant growth. So. Uh, the take-home message for this work is that uh, we uncovered a plant genetic network that can guard or control the homeostasis of leaf microbiota. So if the components are mutated in this network, then uh, we'll see uh, certain, um, especially the op optimistic uh, microbe, uh, will overproliferate and then uh, lead to the dysbiosis um, of phenotype and also harmful uh, cause uh, 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 damage to the plant health. So the last part I want to talk about is uh, plant immunity. So, um, so, so we know we we in our field we always we, we often say that the disease for plant disease is an exception. Uh, that's because plants evolved um, the immune uh, system to uh, activate defense responses to fight against the pathogens. However, differently from human the pathogen, which has adaptive immunity and specialized immune cells. Plants only have innate immunity, uh, which means, and, and we call it a two-layered immune system because um, it, it relies on two classes of immune receptors to recognize um, pathogen-derived what we call non-self molecules and initiate um, signaling, signaling pathways. Um, so the first class of receptors is called the PRR, located on the um, cell surface and leads to PTI. And, uh, I already told you that virulent pathogens can use effectors to uh, shut down PTI and cause disease. And some of the effectors can be recognized by a second class of effector, uh, receptors um, called NLR and le leading to uh, ETI, uh, which usually generates uh, strong resistance. Um, so plant immunity has a very long, uh, has a long history uh, of study and uh, immune receptors also uh, particularly has been uh, 